You know, those are the things that a sim can't really teach you. Yeah. You get the feel right, but you can't get the physical aspect. Yeah, and it's totally different. I mean, yeah. such a different vibe here than most tracks. I mean, you know, Dover's the place that you get the sense of speed, um, and some of the mile and a half, but certainly this place is is different, you know, in that regard. Will you know much about the tire after this practice, or are you not going to know until 100, 200 laps into the race tomorrow night? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, when I think back to the spring race and kind of what transpired there, there were there were little signs here and there that something was fixing to be different, and I think that we just all kind of didn't pay that as much attention as we probably should have, just because typically when you get going in a race, it kind of fixes itself. Um, so whatever happened here in the spring, it's just like things kept snowballing. You know, we ended up running really slow around the racetracks. So when you're not running as fast, you're probably not laying as much rubber. It was kind of cool out. So um, I do think it was a little bit of a perfect storm, but it was a storm that everyone seemed to like, particularly from the competition side at NASCAR. So, um, you know, I, I think that they are trying to recreate that. And until we can get through this practice, I hope that it gives you enough sign of what it's going to be like. and. Um, truthfully, that's all you have to go off of. So with, you make the best guess from there. With the um, other series rain, uh, racing with ARCA and trucks and Xfinity later tonight, do you feel like with the rubber being laid down that the tires may be a little bit more um, not as, as wearing out? Yeah, I don't know. I, I really, I mean, to me, the truck race looked pretty normal, I would, I would say. Um, so I don't. I don't think that's going to hurt anything, you know, having having some more series here to help uh, help kind of prep the track in. So, but we'll see. I, I really don't know. And, and do you feel like the teams may be more prepared? Because as the race went on in the spring, you guys kind of adjusted to where, how far you could go, what you could do with the car. Sure. Even, even if the tire wear is really good, do you feel like the teams are maybe perfected it a little bit better to where it's not going to have the same shocking effect? I do think that you give – the drivers and the teams in this garage an opportunity to go at something twice uh, even if it even if we had the exact same circumstances that we had here in the spring I think if you just in that race and restart another 500 lap race it would have looked a lot different um, and, and that's just part of being in this garage even if the tire situation was the same as last year it's warmer the Xfinity cars just lay down a bunch of rubber would yeah. it even be possible to tell with that dynamic shift um it's really hard to tell right now like we just had that conversation in our hauler of just you know we have a base layer of rubber on the racetrack from all the other series so the track's not completely white but do we pick that rubber up and not lay our own and and then the track is is marbled like it was in the spring so um really kind of unknowns of what the tire's going to do rubber wise and if it lays rubber like like it has in the past then i think you'll see a really traditional night race are you guys kind of going into this with two separate race plans the march plan the traditional plan i mean you just try to practice as hard as you can if you feel like the track isn't taking rubber i think you're going to put more focus on the long run but if uh, if the track's taking rubber like normal you're going to make normal adjustments and honestly car setup wise there's there's really nothing we can do at this point we're just going to set up to have the fastest car we can and and see how that plays out so people have talked a lot about practice and how it's important but with it being so early and big for tomorrow's race how much can you realistically take from today's session i think you learn a lot i think you know at night it just you know we don't really have a true a to b because the track usually takes rubber and gets slicker at night so it ends up feeling about the same as it did in, in practice during the day so um this place is always just low in grip and you're trying to make the car work and whether that's during the day or at night it's it's really not that big a difference for us going back to last going tomorrow um i mean for us we just have to go execute and have a good good night so it really doesn't um you know it's it's a typical elimination race we're not as comfortable as we'd want to be for sure so we gotta put put a good practice together qualifying and and then uh put a good couple stages together and then finish the race you know we're gonna have to finish the race well um and that's really what my focus is going back to last week was it kind of a surprise that that car was able to run to finish let, al let alone run after the wreck yeah i mean it's, it's a surprise to me for sure i mean as, as hard as it was but um it's just the next gen era you know these things can you can put tires on them and as long as the suspension's relatively not broken um 
it might be bent but not broken, you can keep making laps. So that's that's what we saw. It was kind of kind of surprising that I could keep going, but I didn't really gain any positions, which was a, a bummer. Kind of needed one or two more pick wrecks. Um, no, um, I just thought I was launching over Brad, um, and then I, I was worried about the catch fence on the, the left, but um, I never really got there. My car kind of hovered on that second part of the, the guardrail, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what we can do differently with the racetrack, but it certainly would have been sketchy had I, you know, launched over the, or into the catch fence and whether it held me or not. Do you think it's a concern with the car or is it just kind of just one of those freak things that happened? It's just a freak wreck, but um, I mean, not really concerned with the car other than the, the fact that the hits are, are hard and we still need to improve, you know, uh, the flush impacts that you have with this car. But um, yeah, nothing, it's just nothing with the wreck was, it was just racing. Yeah. Is this just Alex, with, uh, considering with what happened in the spring and everything, um, it was unpredictable, but with yeah. a few series racing within the last couple of days, including tonight, uh, do you feel like your team... Uh, what happened back then? Do you feel like you guys have maybe perfected that if it happens again? And if so, like, do you feel like there's more been more rubber put down to where it may hinder that same effect? Yeah, I mean, it's warmer, um, and there's more rubber on the racetrack for sure. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens if we pick that up or, or if it stays down and um, doesn't wear the tires aggressively. It's just going to be interesting to see, right? Like, we don't really know. It sounds like the, the tests throughout the summer, even though it was really hot, it still really wore the tires out. Uh, but right now there's a lot of rubber on the track to start with, so it'll be interesting to see. Given how hot and cold your summer was, uh, would you have expected after two playoff races to be in this kind of position in the first round? Uh, I mean, I think we're certainly capable of it, right? We've shown that. We just need to be able to maintain it. So, um, yeah, I think we're in a good spot right now. Proud of the team so far. And, um, you know, honestly, we, we could be even better. We, we had our fair share of mistakes and walk in the plan. So, um, yeah, just got to keep working away at it. How you fit in, how do you feel like round two shapes up for your team specifically with the tracks that are there? Yeah, really good places for us. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. Do you, we have any sense of what the tire will do after this practice, or do you have to wait until the race? I think we'll have an idea of, of what it's going to do after practice or during practice. Um, but you know, we all saw what it did during practice in the, the spring, and just all said, "Oh, it's not going to do that," because we've seen it at other tracks, and it wouldn't do it in the race. So um, it'll be interesting to see what what does happen. You know, there's a lot of rubber on the racetrack right now, so um, probably our best shot to not grind the tires straight off, but uh, we're going to find out. Hey, Chase, so you had to win a race to get into the playoffs. Um, you weren't even were really on the point bubble at that point. You had to win to get in, and now you find yourself, I believe, double digits above the cut line and everything. So, you know, just the whirlwind of the last few weeks of you not being out, you winning, and now you're into the good, you know, going to Bristol. You may just have to, you know, get some good points to move on to the next round. You know, what does that say about your season, uh, considering where it started with the uncertainties with SHR and everything? Yeah, I think it shows that, you know, we're kind of hitting our stride at the right point of the season under probably the, the hardest point of the season for us, just with the, you know, the chaos, I guess, that's going on. You know, the shop is, you know, that's the hardest point because guys are still – you know, leaving and trying to find other positions. So uh, for us to be able to running, you know, as strong as we are right now, I think says a lot about just the people and, um, yeah, just proud of the effort, right? Like, obviously, the, the middle part of the season was a little bit tough, but with how the, the format is, if you can win a race in the regular season and just perform 10 weeks in a row, you, you set yourself up to potentially be a champion. So, um, you know, for us, we just need to have you know, seven or eight more solid weeks and, um, you know, I feel like we've, we've done a really good job, you know, going from Darlington and then carrying that momentum into the playoffs. Obviously, Atlanta didn't go well, but, um, you know, last week was, was kind of just on par with, like, what we did at Darlington without the win. So, yeah, really proud of everybody, and hopefully we continue it. And Darlington has also known for a lot of tire wear, which you won that race. And so with what in the spring, come in here, maybe it, you guys as a team have gotten better with those tires, know what you can do. But just coming from that uh, – grassroots late model background and stuff with like saving tires and stuff you know you want at Darlington you know how confident are you about going into tomorrow yeah I mean I feel good about it I feel like this is a really good just track for us as a company and even myself as a driver but you know I don't really know what to expect um 
you know, who knows if we're going to have the tire situation or if it's going to be just like it is typically here. You know, there's probably way more rubber on the racetrack this time than there ever was last time. Um, so, yeah, honestly, I don't know what to expect. Um, you know, I think even practice can say one thing, and then, you know, 100 laps into the race, it can look a whole other, another way. So, yeah, I'm confident either way. You know, our stuff's been pretty good at Bristol regardless. And, and like I said, I feel like this is a place that just as a company we get around pretty good. So, hopefully, uh, you know, we can translate that into a solid week. I don't know if I learned anything, honestly, because <laughs> the one time I went the hardest, I drove it all the way to the lead, had no tire issues, and won the stage. Yeah. And then in the last part of the race, I saved and had tire problems. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You got a 45 minute practice session done today. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, is that yeah. <laughs> it's, long, it's one of the longest in my career, so that's yeah. awesome. I'll take that. It's true. By about five minutes. Yeah, that's cool. Ty, the Gibbs cars are typically really strong here. Does that give you confidence going into a Final yeah, for sure. But then we were usually great at Watkins Glen, and we suck last week. So I don't know. Hopefully they're good. Thank you. What kind of feel is there? A specific sort of feel that you're looking for uh, that you know that um, I mean, has worked well for you here? Yeah, I mean you have to be, I think, a little bit free to roll the center, but you can't be too free. So I think it's pretty fine balance. But if you're too free, you just run the top. Usually you can make up for it. So, so that's the trick. That's part. That's what's fun here. You can move around. Yeah. Between Atlanta, Watkins Glen, and you know. Maybe we might have tire problems here this weekend. Um, mobile drivers have talked about, you know, how this is like truly the wild card, you know, wild card round. Is that something you're a fan of, or do you want things to be more orderly, to, so to speak? Um, I don't really care, honestly. I'd just rather somebody make the rules and we get a race. That doesn't really bother me. But I think the previous race was wild, and we ran really good. So I would like it for it to be the same. And then last, last uh, week in first race, yeah, and then last week in first race, you also talked about, you know. The, Difficulties of passing the car suggested 900 horsepower. Um, obviously, there was the, the tires were the hot button topic going into it, and it didn't seem to work as well or as well yeah. as expected. Uh, what were your experiences kind of in the car? Well, with I those? think we've all talked about it as drivers. I mean, the tire fall off definitely will be nice, but we all have the same car. We all basically have the same era, so in a way. So when the tires fall off, we all just get slower together. It's not like, it's like everybody brings it, sorry, it's like everybody just brings everybody down together. like. I mean, some guys went a little bit faster, but I mean, there's some guys that I was in front of that were really slow, and I couldn't get by them. And I was, I caught them from a straightaway back end once, so it's pretty far. And so it's, it's like everybody goes slower together when the tire fall off. So to that point, would you know the, t the tires maybe have worked if it was like Richmond where you had the option and, and you um, at least mix it up? No, nah, maybe at the end if there's late cautions and somebody saved them, but that's just kind of a lucky dog position, right? Like. Yeah. I mean, it's like you've seen it in some arc races where the guys save tires at the end and they just blitz through the field and go in it. So, I don't know. I think, I mean, I raced Xfinity, day before, Xfinity the race the day before and I pass people all day and got to move around and pass people. So, and Cup Car really, really hard too. But I think that's just the way the arrow is and I'm not having a whole lot of power. And it's just kind of all works together. Steven Stump of FrontStretch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos. And if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.